Hey, it's Joel. This is the world's largest open RCF1 car. Sean is actually back in Michigan right now. He moved out to Seattle, but he's got to get more of his stuff. So we went and got a moving van and he's trekking across the country to Seattle, which means it's up to me to film, which is why this is probably not properly lit. Let's just hope to God you can hear me. We need to talk about this open RCF1 because it's almost time to run again. We've added some really cool things to it and we're gonna update you on those really soon. But this is very specific in that there's this part right here and where this part goes is very important. Right now, this car has brackets and little clips that kind of hold the top part down right here and right here. There's supposed to be this little button that goes right there. It keeps the top from doing that. The problem is this button that I printed doesn't fit. If we undo the clips, oh, those are strong. And then we take this out. So here, I'll zoom in a little bit and you'll see why it doesn't fit. I hope you can see now, because look, right here, it doesn't fit. There's a screw right here and that attaches to a nut that's in here and that holds this piece in. I didn't have any screws that were short enough. So if you can tell, there's a, there's a, there's a metal nut around this screw to take up some space, but it means that this won't fit. And in fact, this is actually a little bit too wide, so it's not gonna fit. What we need to do is make a new piece and it needs to be able to fit over the screw. It needs to be able to fit over the nut and it needs to, ooh, cut it. And it needs to stick out a little bit so that piece that's on the floor, so it works. Let me get my calipers. Here we go, let's, let's get to measuring. So first let's measure right across the, the head of the screw and it measures at 19.5. We're gonna call that 20 millimeters. The distance down so we can take the caliper and go like that. Okay, that says 12.3, 12.3. It means that it needs to stick out a little bit. And so if we double that to say 25, that will give us some that sticks out to interface with the other piece. Okay, so now we need to measure across here. And that says 31.72, 31.72. It means that with, we need to make something a little bit smaller. So let's say, let's say 30. Why don't we say, why don't we say 30? Okay, that would work. Or no, 31. <laughs> let's say 31. Let's, let's, let's say 31. We've got the measurement across the screw head. We, ha we know how deep it is. We know how wide it is. And we know how tall we need to make that. The last thing is this nut right here. And it measures at 18.78 millimeters, which means if we make it 19, we should be good to go. We have all the measurements we need. Let's go upstairs. Let's create a new one and then let's, let's print it out. Here we go. We've got Fusion 360 open. We have our measurements right here. Let's actually make something. So I'm gonna go up to solid, create sketch. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna choose this plane. I'm gonna hit C for circle. I'm gonna go to origin, drag it out. And then I'm gonna type in the diameter of that plug that I want. And according to my measurements, it is 31 millimeters in diameter. I'm gonna hit finish sketch. I'm gonna click this, hit E, and now I want to actually make it a certain height. And according to our measurements, it is going to be 25 millimeters tall. I'm gonna go 25 and hit enter. So there we go, we've got our plug, but we need to make the hole for the screw and for the nut. So let's go right back here. I'm gonna drop this down, I'm gonna turn on the sketch, I'm gonna hit the right mouse button, and I'm gonna say edit the sketch, because we need to add some sketches to that. So first what we need to do, we need to add the circle for the screw head, and according to our measurements, we can make it 20 millimeters, and that means it'll fit over it. So we can hit C for circle, I can go to origin, I can drag it out, and I can type in 20, and hit enter. Now about that nut. So that is a polygon and we measured from flat side to flat side and we got 19 millimeters. So what we can do is go up to create polygon and then circumscribed polygon. We can click the center, drag out, make sure you're kind of right along that axis there. And it's it wants the distance from center to one of the flat sides. So what we did is we measured flat side to flat side and that was 19 millimeters. We need to cut 19 in half and that gives us 9.5. I'm gonna type 9.5 for measurement and hit enter. And there we go. That's actually kind of all we have left to do. I'm gonna 
finish the sketch. And now what I can do, since these sketches are enabled, I can pick certain things, so such as this, and I'm going to hold down shift as I click the various parts of the sketch that I want to cut upwards. So now that they're all selected, oops, and that too. There we go. So I hope you can kind of get the idea of what we're doing. What we're going to do is kind of make a compound two-dimensional shape and we're going to cut into the model. So the, the big circle here is for the the screw and it's about that big it's 20 millimeters but then we need to take into account the little edges of the polygon which is right here now that we have that all selected hit E for extrude that's going to ask us how far up we want to go and as we go into the model it's going to be red because that is a cut operation and according to our measurements 22 millimeters where'd it go there it is there it is that is our shape and you can tell that it has the circle cutouts and it has the cutouts for well here it makes it easier if I turn off the sketch there we go so you can kind of see how it has the circular shape cut out and it has the cutout bits for the polygon uh, one last thing I kind of I kind of like to do this so I'm gonna modify I'm gonna hit a chamfer I'm going to select this edge and I'm just going to bring it down one millimeter and I'm going to hit OK. So there we go. We have the space for the screw. We have the space for the nut and it should be deep enough to where it rides into that little hole, locks into place and it should be tall enough so that it intersects the other piece and it holds it into place. Let's go print it out and then let's go test it out. Look. Here it is, here's the new one. It's in red, it's like a strong hero red. Okay, it fits over the screw. Oh, and it slots into place. Oh, that is nice, let me zoom in. So you can tell that it's got the things inside that are supposed to go around the nut and the screw. So if we put it on right here, it goes over the screw head and turn it until it goes in. And then it's, oh, it's locked into place. That's great. Uh, let's let's see if the other piece fits. Here we go. Here we go. So this goes on just like so. Oh yes. Okay. One clip, two clip, and now that top part doesn't release. So now the open RC is is ready. Almost ready. Almost ready. Oh, almost ready. We've got bearings on the front wheels. We've got bearings in the back. We're sturdying up the motor shaft and it's, it's really, really close. In fact, we took it for a little test spin. I don't know. Okay, here, here's a, here's a quick second. Ready? Okay, done. That's all I can show you, but be just, just be prepared. This is a lot closer than it has ever been. This is going to be running. And I'm really excited about it. A big thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned a little something from that tutorial. It's really cool that, that we have this technology because rather than, I mean, I could have used wood or I could have used metals or something to create that piece, but I had an idea and I had a 3D printer. And so 30 minutes later after designing it, I had the proper piece. I hope that's inspiring to you because that's inspiring to me. Don't forget to hug each other more. Love you all. And as always, High five.